What's up everybody, I'm Brendan and this is my cat Lou and today we're going to go a bit beyond the basics. We're going to take our gritty site that we've been working on and add a little more zip and zazz to it. So what does that look like? Well, the first thing I'm going to teach you is how to add shadow to images. And I think this effect works very well with PNGs, which is what I've used for my gritty site. So we're going to make gritty kind of pop off the page using uh, this shadow effect. Then after that, I'm going to teach you how to add a static nav bar to a site. Static meaning wherever you're navigating to the site, up, down, left, right, the navigation bar will always be at the top. And last but certainly not least, I'll teach you how to replicate the Twitter slash Slack slash Facebook little avatar image. And then we're going to render uh, the message aligned with that avatar image. Um, so let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing I want to do, and I think this is just like a nice little touch for most images, is add a slight border to this gritty image so it looks as if it's kind of popping out. So let's go back to our index.css. And what I want to do is um, grab that small gritty, and I'm going to use the filter and give it a drop shadow, 1px, 1px, 1px the color of black, and I recommend um, looking the drop shadow in the filter option up online. Just give it a quick Google just to give you a little taste of what it's actually doing. Um, but when I refresh, you'll notice how Gritty now has this nice little border, and it just kind of gives it a nice pop. One thing I actually want to do is change the HTML a bit. So I would like to have a, a nice nav bar up top, um, and we can accomplish that by using an unordered list in HTML. So I'm going to change this a bit and I'm going to say navbar section. I'm going to use a nav tag and this is part of HTML5, but it's just a semantic tag. It's really no different than a div. It's just used to specify that, hey, I'm building out a navbar component. And I'm going to put an unordered list in here. I'm going to put a bunch of link components and anchor tags and within the anchor tags I'm going to link to things so grit five this will kind of be like my home link um, I'll add three links gritty landing banner and then a uh, link to the gritter Twitter clone down at the bottom of our site now what I want to do with this nav component is, well, as you can see, it's pretty ugly right now, but I want to do is take these link components or these list elements and have them displayed in line so it looks like a normal uh, nav bar. I also want it to be static so that when we scroll, it's always located at the top of our screen. So we can do that with CSS. So let's give the nav component or the nav, uh, the nav bar here a class of nav bar. Save that, and then at the top, I'm going to add a navbar class, navbar class selector. And to get it to stay where it is at the top of the page, we use the position uh, fixed. And then I'm going to say, all right, it's going to take up the entire width of the page. And it should be located, because it has a fixed position, I want it to be fixed at the very top, like literally brushing up on the very top of our window. And we can do that by using top and setting it to a value of zero. So let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, cool. So it's kind of stuck there, but let's add a background color. Um, background color. I'm just going to give it a nice background color of white. Oops, background color, white again. Cool. All right, nice. So it's kind of staying where it is, which is exactly how a normal nav, uh, a nav bar on a, a site works. So there's one thing, though, that we haven't accomplished, and that's a getting rid of these dots. Um, maybe getting rid of this, the text decoration on this link, because it's an anchor tag, it, it's kind of, uh, it has that blue look to it, and I'm going to get rid of that. And I also want these things to be displayed in line. So let's switch back over to our CSS. Now below our nav bar, I'm going to say, 
nav bar and then all of the list components within the nav bar, I want you to have a display property of inline block. And what that's going to do is push all of these lines um, right next to each other. Cool. But I also want to add a little bit of a margin. So let's do that by saying um, padding 30px, 30px um, to the top and 20px to the left and right. All right, so that looks pretty, pretty good. It's actually a little too um, wide at this point. So let me, let me actually change this to zero and see how that looks. This is actually how most CSS is written. You kind of figure out as you go. Um, now, so I don't like that. Actually, that's not terrible. The problem is now, um, because we specified a certain size or a certain margin for this banner section, that um, at the top, when you're scrolled all the way to the top, the nav bar seems like it's super wide, when in fact it's really only this wide. Um, but, you know, it looks okay for now. So one thing I do want to do is get rid of that text decoration. I don't want it to have that underline. So I'm going to say grab um, all of the A's within the class uh, navbar and text decoration, text decoration, none. See what happens when I do that. All right, cool. So that looks pretty good. I'm actually going to open up the uh, Google Chrome developer tools real quick and see what's going on size-wise. So I'm gonna see how big this thing is. All right, so it looks like it's 50 pixels high. So I'm, that means I'm going to add a margin to this banner section of 50 pixels high. So 50 pixels, refresh. All right, now that's starting to look pretty good, right? Cool. Uh, one thing we can add is we can change the styling of those links. So let's make them uh, black. Cool. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So let's add an ID of blue to this anchor tag. Actually, no, let's add a class class of blue and then in our index.css let's say all of the um, every anchor tag with a class of blue should have the color of blue now why am I doing a dot blue it's just a special syntax you have to use with anchor tags when you're styling them um, I don't know why it's just something you have to memorize so let's refresh that and that looks good. All right, so I now wanna redo this gritter section. I'm going to get rid of these dots here that make up our unordered list. And then for each one of these uh, list um, tags, I wanna add a little image, like a little avatar image of Gritty's face. So let's first go to our uh, HTML and then let's add an ID of greets. Okay, greets, and then we want to grab the unordered list, all the unordered lists within the div of the class of, or ID of greets, and then we're going to say list style type, none, save that. All right, so we got rid of the dots, and that's looking pretty good. You know what, I also want to add a little padding to this section because everything's kind of spaced out, and it doesn't look so good. So let's go back to our index.html, grab this outer div and give this a class of um, gritter section. Copy that. And I'll put it put it above the gritter, the ID of gritter gritter section. And then we're going to say padding. And then for the top and bottom, 20 picks. For the left and right, padding of 50 picks. Save that. All right, so things are looking a little better now. Nice and evenly spaced away from this side here. 
Okay, so let's go back to this. We want to add images um, in line with each one of these tweets. So let's add a class of um, avatar to these divs. And notice there's nothing in this div. Okay, so all of those divs have a class of avatar. Let's move over here to avatar. Okay, now this is a little tricky. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, background image. And then within here we pass it a URL. I'm going to give it a relative file path. Now the dot dot slash means to go up one level in the folder structure. So we're in here and I want it to exit out of this CSS folder. So now we're basically at this structure where the CSS folder and the images folder is located. And I want to say go down into the images folder and grab that image and use that as a background image. Okay, we want background size uh, cover. And we want to add a height of 50 pixels width of 50 pixels for this div and then what we're actually want to do is give this div a border radius so what we're doing is we're creating a circular div we're assigning it a height and width of 50 pixels and we're saying um, I know this is a div but give it a background image and use that image to cover the space of that background image oh I recognize the typo here so 50% border radius, and let's see what that does. Refresh the page, cool. So you'll notice now that things aren't being displayed in line, but we can quickly get around that by um, changing the display of this avatar to inline block. Save that, and things still aren't lined up, but that's fine because I know what we can do with that. Um, we can use a property called vertical align middle and these are just things you should Google um, because they're very specific based on the types of HTML tags you're working on but let me refresh that and boom everything is nice and lined up right in the middle the way we wanted it to all right y'all that's it for today hopefully you can take some of these things we learned today and try incorporating it into your own site um, so I guess I'll see you in the next video. Good luck. Bye.